In the previous part of this series we looked at Schrodinger's early education and left him stationed on the Italian border during the First World War. Although stationed and on military duty, Schrodinger was able to maintain his studying, surveying Einstein's new theories from his position on the Italian front, near the Italian town of Processo in the northeast of the country. In the spring of 1917 he was returned to Vienna, where he had been assigned to teach a course in meteorology. He would remain here as the Great War drew to a close, but he was strained financially and both parents were suffering from illness. Between 1918 and 1920, he made contributions to the understanding of colour vision, showing a biological side that will be shown later in his life. This interest was likely the result of his contact with Franz Exner, Karl Kohlrausch, and the theoretical physics lectures given by Friedrich Hasenerl. But with the war and subsequent breakup of the Austro-Hungarian Empire placing a limit on job opportunities, he took up an offer from the University of Jena, Germany, but he quickly jumped elsewhere. In 1919, prior to this move, Schrödinger had become engaged to Anne-Marie Bertel. At the time, Annie had been working as a secretary in Vienna with an annual salary that outweighed that of Schrödinger, and these money issues meant that he turned down an associate professorship at the University of Vienna, as it was not enough to support them if Annie were not to work. The offer from the University of Jena enabled the couple to marry in March of 1920. After a brief time at Jena, Schrödinger left and became an associate professor in theoretical physics at the University of Stuttgart, where he came to befriend Hans Reichenbach, the German philosopher of science. In 1921, however, he moved to a position as professor of theoretical physics at the University of Rocklau, which at the time was called the University of Breslau as per the city, as it was part of the Weimar Republic during the interwar period. But he was not fond of his position and the environment, possibly because geographic upheaval and tensions between Germans and Poles caused an uprising in Upper Silesia, resulting in a mob torching many Polish buildings, including a library in Breslau. Breslau would go on to have anti-Semitic riots in 1923 and become a strong support base for the Nazi party. He expressed his intention to leave Breslau in a letter to the Austrian physicist Stefan Mayer, where he simultaneously expressed his desires to move to the University of Zurich. He made this move later in 1921, replacing Max von Lau as Chair of Theoretical Physics at the University. At Zurich he found a degree of solace with Switzerland unscathed by the war and a great intellectual atmosphere, and he settled there for about six years, during which he befriended various colleagues. For the first year, a close colleague of his was the mathematician Hermann Weyl, who would provide a great deal of mathematical insight to Schrödinger that would go on to prove very handy indeed. He was also close to the Dutch physicist Peter Debye. At Zurich, he dealt with atomic structure and spectra, the specific heats of solids and the problems of thermodynamics. He also continued his research into colour vision. In 1924, however, he began to study in quantum statistics, then, in 1925, read the thesis of Louis de Broglie, wherein de Broglie outlined his theory of electron waves, ultimately leading to the hypothesis that any moving particle or object has an associated wave. This would take Erwin Schrödinger in a different direction in his research, ultimately leading to something that, after more than 70 years of experimentation, has not once been found wanting. Thanks for watching.